rhetoric of promoting linguistics as a science also lies this very, very sinister story of the use of, ostensibly the use of languages to develop these so-called striking new technologies in all this rhetoric of user-friendly technologies, etc. Okay. Um, but, you know, uh, there, there is a lot that is not told to us as to what exactly these, those, the so-called technologically useful applications are for. What uses? Okay. Um, so, so this is something that I do want to bring to your attention, especially in relation to uh, this whole issue of, you know, linguistics is location in the humanities. Okay. That is now under siege okay, from not very innocent quarters. Okay. Um, now there are, uh, there are historical and conceptual reasons uh, for how and why the, the discipline of linguistics has come to be located in humanities. Um, you know, which I don't want to bore you with enumerating beyond a certain point. It's, the historical reasons are often, um, you know, are often sort of grounded in a lot of conservatism, okay? Uh, so the need, you know, origins of linguistic analysis arising from the need for the correct, quote unquote, correct dissemination of oral texts that are of religious value, okay, um, and written ones, uh, when scribal copying was the predominant mode of perpetuation of written texts, uh, correct, relatively correct theological interpretations of scriptural texts and accurate translations of texts, uh, uh, then the quote unquote, the command of language, to use the phrase made famous by the late uh, Bernard Cohn, for reasons of empire. And not just in the recent context of colonialism, but in fact since ancient times, if one looks at the content of Akkadian, Hittite, Old Persian, Ashokan Prakrit, royal inscriptions, you see this repeatedly. And relatedly, the creation of tools for the learning of instrumentally useful languages for, you know, for empire building and governance. Um, analytically oriented pedagogy has found, always found uh, grammar and phonetics useful. Okay. The conceptual reasons uh, which, you know, might motivate placing of linguistics in the humanities, some of the conceptual reasons. I'm not really talking about deep conceptual reasons, but things that are more immediately obvious. Okay. So the metalingual capacity of language, to use Roman Jakobson's term, uh, facilitating, you know, uh, facilitating the use of language okay, to, to explore manifestations of language. Metrics in the domain of poetry and dramatic verse and song have been, are found to be useful, you know, where, where linguistics has a handy application, so to speak. Uh, application, but not, not in an instrumental sense, necessarily. Okay, there's, you know, there's a uh, strong aesthetic dimension to it. Okay. Um, relatedly, the structural and aesthetic parallels between the linguistic and the musical modes uh, structural analogs as well as interactions with phenomena in, in the social domain, you know, notably including in principle at least caste, ethnicity and, uh, well, caste, ethnicity, uh, gender, culture, more, you know, and, and subdomains of cultural activities such as the culinary and dietary subdomains. I submit that linguistics actually does have insights to offer in those, these domains as well, uh, and notably disability, uh, disability uh, you know, as a 
social benefit. Okay. Um, now, I want to, you know, be a little contrarian and uh, mention that, uh, you know, it has come to my attention that linguistics as a discipline is often confused with semiotics. Okay, this is a common category mistake that I find is made. Semiotics uh, deals with signs in various systems, not just in the linguistic world alone. Okay. Uh, at the same time, okay, uh, what linguistics is, is something that is within the discipline, uh, you know, even if it's not declared to be so, it's a very politicized issue. Okay. Uh, because, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, and this is where I think uh, one would like to raise the issue of why, you know, uh, the sort of the control over the discipline of linguistics is such a, is such a politicized issue. I mean, are there, uh, is, it, is it purely because of the dynamics of uh, how human community behaves? Or is, are there genuine issues of method involved here? Okay. Um, and, you know, relatedly, I do want to highlight uh, one other issue that uh, comes up, namely, you know, what, what sort of relationship does linguistics have to postmodernist approaches in general, okay? Um, by and large, most of linguistics is not inimical to postmodernist approaches. However, there are different positions taken by linguists of different persuasions as regards postmodernist perspectives in, in theorizing about language. Uh, I bring up postmodernist approaches also because, and here I want to sort of, I, again, maybe I, I want to be deliberately a bit contrarian and suggest that postmodernist approaches are not all you know sufficiently critical across the board no okay um, and this is something that uh, you know that i can't help noticing as something of an outsider to to postmodernism myself okay um now i've, I've already indicated that uh, there is a premium on aesthetic okay so there is an aesthetic of form that continues to inform the doing of linguistics, uh, along with, with a persisting interpretative mode. Now, in these two, in these two respects, I see a little bit of hope for, for linguistics, uh, you know, as as a discipline, you know, not to be completely, completely um, engulfed within the conservative. Uh, sphere altogether because this is where uh, you know this is where I feel that there is genuine genuine possibility of critical engagement okay uh, and this I would say especially given that linguistics uh, has come to evolve you know, uh, even allowing for the differences in approaches within the discipline itself it has come to evolve. It has come to come to evolve as a you know as so called as just a bunch of analytical methods, okay, which uh, which are seen to be in some sense you know, by the practitioners themselves as being somewhat value neutral, okay. Um, and this is where I think I would like to relate to uh, relate this to you know, the concern that Prashanto. Uh, voiced regarding the, the issue of you know whether whether you know whether, whether criticality okay is being jettisoned more and more. This is something that I think you know anyone who engages with issues of you know uh, linguistic analysis, uh, whether in trying to make sense of literary texts, etc. Even when applying traditional philology, 
Okay. Especially, I would say, when applying traditional philology in, the, in trying to make sense of texts. Um, I don't think, you know, I, I honestly would not agree that one has to, one, that one has to or one should jettison criticality altogether. Okay. Um, a couple of, uh, you know, I'd like to sort of conclude by picking up a couple of uh, things that I could relate to uh, from from my disciplinary perspective, uh, from the, in, in shrapnel minima, one was the article on abstraction and the abstract by uh, Swapan Chakravarti, okay, uh, where one sees abstraction and the abstract uh, you know, in interesting the sort of contrapuntal relationships in different configurations. Now these have an interesting dialect of Relation, dialectical relationship, I mean, dialectical relationship with languages. Uh, because languages are very strongly grounded in concrete expression, as I hope all of you would be aware in, in all the languages that we not only study in our classrooms, but languages that we use, you know, in, in everyday situations. Uh, and yet languages embody a great deal of abstraction in their anatomical makeup. Now, um, and the other uh, article that I could relate to, actually it's an interview that I could relate to, is the interaction of, you know, looking at the emotions uh, with, with linguistic analysis. Okay. Uh, this, this is especially challenging domain wherein I think, uh, you know, it's possible to take a very sort of, you know, objectivist, cognitive, scientific viewpoint on, you know, the interaction of languages and language and emotions, uh, which has been, which is being done, has been done, but, but I submit that uh, this is where linguistics would really benefit, you know, uh, from opening up to, to inquiry, you know, from other humanities perspectives where things like subjectivity, okay, uh, you know, perspectival uh, specificities um, and and in general, you know, how emotions are, are actually expressed, how they are, you know, how they figure, to what extent they figure or don't figure, okay, in, uh, in texts and in, in the way we respond to texts. Okay. This is another domain where I feel that, uh, you know, that linguistics um, needs to talk to, need, needs to talk to you know, other related humanities approaches much, much more, uh, with perhaps some unsettling of the methods in within the discipline as well. Um, in this, I found especially the interview with Shantanu Das, uh, form, sense, emotion, in shrapnel minima, particularly thought provoking. Okay, and finally to conclude, linguistics. Uh, places the human in strong focus. Now, certain animal systems of communication have been found to share broad features in common with natural language. Now, it's possible for the so-called scientific, uh, you know, uh, advocates of linguistics to then to then turn around and say, "See, the language is sort of located in a broader biological sphere." But you see, one can take another perspective on this, namely that the field of semiosis is radically widened to include within its scope the human, the human within a larger ecological context. And this I would like to submit for possible, you know, uh, thinking about, you know, uh, how, you know, how ecological concerns you know, not in a narrow scientific sense or policy sense, but in, in generally sort of 
you know, genuinely uh, reflective ways, how they can, you know, how they can figure in issues of issues of inquiry in the humanities. Uh, to some extent, it's already happening in uh, in a way, for example, that. Uh, uh, you know, that the spiritual and the religious, which uh, Prashanto indicated, um, you know, which also mentioned in his concept book for this session, uh, you know, it, the, the kind of return to spiritualism and religion that one sees, uh, I submit, needs to be also read in terms of a certain kind of uh, response to anti-environmentalist tendencies in late capitalism. Okay, this is something that, especially uh, in you know, in a small way, admitted, you know, not in not in mainstream ways, uh, in very peripheral locations, uh, analytic non-Western philosophy, uh, analytic non-Western philosophy. Uh, is trying to engage with this, and one of the grounds for, you know, for trying to sort of uh, trying to kind of point out, or rather, one of the ways in which th these approaches in analytic non-Western philosophy, uh, often practiced, however, in Western locations, I should mention. Okay, uh, one of the ways in which, one of the grounds in which. Uh, you know, these approaches in analytic non-Western philosophy are trying to, uh, you know, critique, seriously critique, you know, late capitalism is in terms of, in terms of uh, spiritual and religious concerns, okay, bringing in, you know, arguments uh, based in environmental ethics, notably. And this is something that, uh, you know, while it's not central to linguistics at all, nonetheless, uh, issue of method comes up in relation to uh, in relation to linguistics because in linguistics there is a lot of premium on the methods of analytic philosophy overall. Okay. Um, so you know, the domain and the method somehow need to start talking to each other. So having said this now, I uh, would like to con 